Hey, my name is Matt Riley, and a lot of people come and ask me, can you review my store? Now, this is a very, very common question. I actually see this in my group all the time, too. People will just post their website URL, and they'll ask for, for a review. Okay. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of people, so the amount of time it takes to review each and every one of these stores is very, very time consuming. consuming. But what would be better is if you knew how to review your own store. That way, when you, every time you want to open up a store, um, then you'll have the ability to basically ask yourself, is my store good? Is it, does it look like it's ready for buyers to come and make a purchase off of our store? Okay, so you having the skill is just much, much better. And I'm going to do that in this video, and I'm going to... I'm gonna show you and train you on how to be better at this skill, okay? So this is an example store. This is um, nextdealshop.com, and now this is one of the most popular dropshipping stores, so I'll probably use this one and then Inspire Uplift as an example of stores we should look at, and then Snow is, is another, it's an e-commerce store, um, and they set up their store pretty much how we want to set up their stores as well. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to ask ourselves these questions. And I'm going to leave a link in the description for this Google Sheet. But what I would highly recommend is if you want to know if your store is good, if you're ready to run ads to your store, ask yourself these questions. Now, a lot of people will, just, you know, they'll download the sheet or they'll look at it once and then they'll never come back to it again. So what I would recommend is until you're good at this, until you know, is bookmark this Google Sheet, okay? And then actually fill these out. So by filling these out, you can ha you know, you can say yes, you can say no, and I would type it out. And the the people who type it out will be the ones who are more likely to succeed, okay? And the reason why is because they're not going to be able, they're not going to be missing any of these steps, right? And you know, even even for me, I sometimes make mistakes. And I will still make mistakes on my current stores because I had missed one of these products. But if I come back here and I actually type in for every single store, yes, yes, no, then I'll know where I'm missing the problem. And I, and I won't have expensive ad costs. I don't want to lose any money on ads. And I want to make sure I maximize the amount of buyers that I get when I spend money on ads. Okay. So the first and most important question, and this is why I have this um, at the very top is, is your website speed time for your product page below two seconds? Now, I went over this in another video, so I'm just going to go over this really, really, really quick. Um, but what you want to do here is you want to go to a site like pingdom.com. And you don't have to just use pingdom. You can use any other tool. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take your product page, okay? Take your product page. So, you know, not really necessarily your homepage. You can do your homepage. But for example, you know, let's say, let's take like one of these links. So you would click on to your product page, wherever you're directing traffic to, you would copy this URL, go to Pingdom, and then you can paste on here. Now I did another store here, this stream of beauty. So I copied this and then I pasted it here, start test. And as you can see, the load time is 951 milliseconds. So that's under a second. So that's really, really, really good. Um, and so that's fine. That's what you're, you're looking for here. And so let's actually paste this and start the test. Now it's going to take some time, maybe maybe like 30 seconds to a minute to do this. But I would recommend um, if you see your website speed time above two seconds, then there's too much going on with your landing page. Okay. Um, and so let's look at this jewelry one. So this one, this one is a, above two point above two seconds. I got a 2.64. It's okay. It's decent, but where could we improve? So let's take a look at, at the site. Okay. So first of all, what I noticed is there's, there's a lot of images. Okay. There's a lot of images going on here. Okay. So this, all of these images, especially if they're high quality, then that's going to definitely make the website load time slower. So what I would do is if you really want all of these images on here, then I would compress them. And then you can do this for free. Just search on Google compress. Now, if you have too many apps, okay, that's another thing. So I can already tell right here that this, this is not a common theme. And so there's a parallax banner banner here where the background is fixated. And when you scroll with it, 
Um, there's also a chat here. Um, there's the top related products right here on the left. Um, and then it's also f a fixed scrolling as well. When you scroll down through the description, um, and then some more products here, right? And there could be other apps that, I, that we're just not seeing right now. And if you have too many apps, you know, on your store that are unnecessary and then they're, they're not doing anything, then I would probably remove them from your Shopify store. Okay, so let's move on. So the next is, did I do customer research first and then write my own descriptions? So let's take a look at like one of these products here. And so I don't know if this person actually uh, used their own descriptions. Right? Okay, all I did was after I copied their, a little bit of the description, I pasted it in Google and I put a quotation mark at the, at the front and at the end of it. And this is gonna show me exact results, right? If I didn't put the quotation, it's gonna show me similar, similar results, but I'm looking for pages that have exactly this. And when it says no results, that's good. That means they wrote their own descriptions. And that's something that Facebook really likes and they'll give you cheaper ad costs if you have unoriginal content or if you have original content, okay? If you have too much unoriginal content, then Facebook will penalize you and your ad costs are gonna be more expensive, okay? Now let's look at something like this. So this is a pregnancy safe driving seatbelt. And all I did was I just copied you know, the first part of the description just like this into Google and I pasted it here. But as you can see, look how many stores have the exact same description. I don't know who was first, but it looked like it was a huge cycle and everybody was copying and pasting from each other. And Facebook does not like that at all. They're gonna give, definitely, if they're advertising on Facebook, they're probably not gonna be super profitable. Okay, and they're getting charged more. So that's what, that's what I mean when I say write your own descriptions. Now, how do you write your own descriptions? A lot of people say, well, what do I write? Well, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna do customer research. That way you know what to write. Now, the way to do customer research, as I've talked about, and as you've probably heard multiple, multiple times in the past um, already, so you should already know this information, but it's just going on Amazon and reading the real reviews. Now, what I would do here, okay, and I'm gonna just go over this very, very, very quickly because you guys already know this, but what I would do is go to something like Amazon's pregnancy seatbelt, right? And then I would click on the ratings and then just read this, okay? I would read all of these because the reason why, these are reasons why people bought the product in the past and they're going to know, um, and people who wanna buy this product in the future from you are gonna be the same reasons as these people. So if you know these reasons, then that's what you, well, that's what you're gonna have as arsenal to write in your own descriptions, okay? Um, okay, so now the next one is, are my images medium to high quality, okay? Are they free from logos? Are they grammatically incorrect phrases? Okay, so this, this one is really, really, really important. So this is, this was taken from the internet. I know that this one was, but you know, if you're gonna do that, you notice how all of these are like pretty decent quality. They're, none of them are, are low quality and they're only picking a certain amount of images. So what most people will do when they import the, the product from AliExpress is they import all of these images, right? All of these images will come in and you don't want that. You don't want all of these images because you don't need them all. This one, it's gonna, gonna be too much load speed time and then two, Here's an example of an image that you don't want, okay? The root of lumbar pain. Not bad, but not super grammatic, grammatically correct, right? Um, so here's one. Room with air conditioning is cold and waste feeling cold in winter. That does not make any sense at all. And what will happen is if a customer sees this and they read this, then they're not going to trust you at all. They're, not, they're, <laughs> they're going to leave. They're not going to buy from you. And so that's what I'm talking about for grammatically incorrect phrases. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what you wanna do and what you're, what you're looking out for here. Um, and then if there's anything low quality, so if you know, if you see something that's like 
like this, for example, like this part of the image, this is super low quality. Okay, you don't want this on your store at all. Okay, if you can do mostly high quality, that's fine. Okay. The next is, can people easily remember and trust my website name? So these nextdealshop.com, okay, that's easy to remember. Let's say I was a customer and I was gonna purchase off this, but then I had to leave, okay? And then I'm gonna say, wait, I wanted to buy that thing, but I don't know, I don't remember what their store name was. Well, if they don't remember, they're never gonna come back to Next Deal Shop, all right? Stream of Beauty, that one's okay. This one, Amaya Home, this one's okay as well, but a lot of people might not know how to spell Amaya, okay? Um, and they, they might spell it wrong, they might not remember that, and so you want names where people can easily remember um, your name. Jewel, jewelgalore.com, this one is really, really good. I like this name. Um, this one is, is really easy to remember, it's trustworthy, uh, it looks trustworthy, and it looks like it fits within the niche as well, okay? Uh, mabubby.com. This one's decent. Um, it's okay. It's it's okay. But you know you got to take a chance. Are are they gonna remember mabubby? Are they not? Usually, what you want to do is you want to have uh, more so common words. Common words that are easily able to be spelled. That's a way to get organic sales and and just more customers. Okay. Okay, so this one, this one's really important. Do I have products in my store that have the potential to go viral on social media? Okay, so this one is actually this is one. Now this is this is a good example. Now this is a beautiful, beautiful store, right? But it's a jewelry store, and jewelry can be good. But if you look at a lot of the jewelry on here, okay, if you look at a lot of the jewelry on here, some of them are a little bit, little bit. Uh, a little bit too common, you know, this is just, you know, too common. And some of this stuff, if we're getting traffic from Facebook and we're running Facebook ads or Instagram ads, like most dropshippers are, then it's going to be hard to go viral. And that's how you're gonna make a lot of money, okay? Is if people, like if it fits within social media, okay? If it's gonna go viral. Now some of these, this is probably never gonna go viral. Okay, unless, you know, not with this image, unless, you know, there's something crazy about the image or they have a crazy video um, that will push it to go viral. But a product just as this, displayed as this, this is probably not gonna go viral. Um, now, something like this, this one's a little bit better. It's a mom pendant. However, you gotta think like, there's a lot of mom pendants out there, okay? And then also this is messed up. So, whoever's website this is, Make sure you switch that up. Um, and so that's what I'm really talking about, for drop shipping at least. And so if you look at like Inspire Uplifts, right? If you look at Next Deal Shops, they have a lot of products that are, you know, more likely to go viral. Okay. Why? Because they can fit within social media. People are going to be more likely to share them, comment on them, okay, make an impulse purchase off them. Cool. So do my reviews look real? Now, this one is really, really important. Um, if you look at Snow Teeths, they have a bunch of, they're just using the Looks app, but or maybe a very similar app to Looks, but they have a bunch of reviews from real customers. They're, um, a lot of people using them, they're showing their faces, um, they're grammatically correct. However, you know, let's look at something like this. This looks a little bit fake. Um, now there are images, which is good. Some of them look real, but the outside shopper haven't taken about yet. So what some people will do is they're going to, let's just take this, this lumbar, for example, let's say you were to import reviews, right? And you know, you were to import all these reviews and then it says it came even before the seller respect. Now people can spot this for sure. And then they'll, they'll think it's a fake review. A class. This looks like a fake review. So if this was imported directly without any context, then that's when your site starts not looking trustworthy. Okay. Okay, so here's two really important questions that you want to be asking yourself as well. So are there too many trust factors? Okay, and then is it easy for customers to complete the purchase? Well, let me go over both of these in this example here. So when 
when I ask, is it easy for your customers to complete the purchase? You know, already there's a pop-up, okay? On the product page, there is a push notification and then there's another one, okay? And and that really, there's, there's a lot going on there. So they gotta click away a couple times before they can come over here to buying the product. Now, when you have too many pop-ups, then what's gonna happen is mo a lot of customers were actually not know how to exit their store or exit the pop-up and then they might just leave the store especially on their mobile phone so i would recommend that if you have any pop-ups on your product page to just remove them okay if it's not easily able to be taken out okay um, Facebook also doesn't really like pop-ups on the product page as well now i've seen some like wheel slide outs do fine because those are a little bit easier to close um, than a pop-up, okay? Um, so that should necessarily be fine, but you know, if, if it's a pain for your customer to go and purchase, you know, which is what you want, you want them to purchase and go through your funnel and then be able to check out, then that's good, okay? That's what you want, that's what you're looking for. So another thing that I, I noticed that are, you know, are there too many trust factors, okay? And so this one's okay. It's not bad. There's like a there's a decent amount of of trust badges on on here, and that's that's pretty much it. That's that's probably okay. But let's look at something like let's look at something like this site. Okay. So now first we have a timer. Okay. Then they have this trust badge, which we've seen everywhere, and we've seen it in other stores. Then they have this buyer protection thing, and then they have you know. <laughs> A bunch of let's see they have a chat right here um, and then basically there's just there's just a lot going on now I now I think that's too many and it's it's okay to have like maybe one or two but there's a lot going on here and so another another thing that you'll see that might not look trustworthy is you know there's the um, currency converter on top of the product so that already doesn't look clean that doesn't look professional you know that the chat is on top of the sticky add to cart where it says this color the color is off um, let me actually move my camera <laughs> because you can't see here um, so yeah so here so the chat right here and then the color right here <clears throat> you know this is off um, and then they have this trusted site as well so that was another thing um, that it's just it's, there's just too much going on here and so you don't want all of this maybe you know if this currency converter was up here the color didn't wasn't glitched the trusted site wasn't on top of the sticky cart um, the chat's okay I would probably have it you know a little bit higher um, but you don't need all this you probably don't even need guaranteed safe checkout because this this one's already overused I've seen this everywhere and if you want to use this, you can you can have this on your own, um, or you can make your own trust badges, and that's that's really what I'm talking about here. Is you don't want too much going on. So let's look at like Next Deal Shop, and and then see theirs. Okay, um, now all they really have here is just that one trust badge. Okay, they have the timer and they have that one trust badge, but that's that's pretty much it. Everything else looks pretty clean. Like there's no incongruencies, there's nothing pasted on top of another, okay? It's a very clean website, okay? Um, and then let's look at something like inspireuplift.com, okay? So they have a code, a pop-up there, but let me, let's look at something like one of their product pages, okay? So their product page, okay? Their product page, they don't even really have a trust badge underneath the add to cart, and they're doing just fine. Okay, um, and this is basically their trust badge down here. However, if you look at it, it's not, it's their own trust. Like, this isn't copied and pasted in, from somewhere else. They don't, it's not like they're copying and pasted images. And so you're running a business, right? You Do you want to be the owner of a business that's, you know, that has the same trust badge as somebody else? Now that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below anything you want, and then subscribe with the notification bells or notification bell. And don't forget to watch my other videos on my channel as well.